Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello there, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a TV show, a really good one, one of the greats in my opinion, and it's not too far back in time. It is called Fringe. This is a great show in my opinion. It's one of my favorites. Came out in 2008, I believe. And went five seasons. Created by J.J. Abrams, Alex Kurtzman, and Robert Orkai. Starring Anna Trove, Otov, Joshua Jackson, John Noble. This show really won me over. Pretty hard to do in the sense that I'm such a big fan of the X-Files. It had a blend of things that was obviously influenced from X-Files and things that X-Files was influenced by. It did it really well, superbly well. The cast, everything's amazing. It even had these images that were put on the episodes that had uh, was like a... Uh, a puzzle, and you had to figure out this code. And certain seasons and episodes, you'd have to decipher the code. The show is basically an FBI division gets wrapped up in the fringe science, it has to do with a near senile old man who has these ideas, and it gets into some deep crazy science stuff, alternate worlds or alternate realities. It has a great way of blending the plot that runs through and the, how do you call it, the Monster of the Week episode type formula. The chemistry between the actors is the best. I'm a fan of J.J. Abrams' Lost for the most part. But there's not really a lot that I can run around and say I'm a big fan of J.J. Abrams. This is my favorite show of his. is probably the best creation uh, of his that I enjoy the most. You know, it's got the X-Files, a little bit of the Twilight Zone, Altered States, the mystery. It has a little bit of procedural uh, aspect to it. And it's just top-notch on every level. Sound effects, drama, intrigue, suspense. It gives you everything you need. It does get a little weird at certain points. So I could see people having a, uh, you know, one of those, uh, it's probably a good show, but it's not for me. That That's normal and, you know, things we enjoy. And when you play with alternate timelines and like alternate realities, it gets, um, a little complicated and I could see people missing certain episodes. It's one of those you have to watch every episode type thing. It had a um, video game, I believe. A com I think it had a comic book. Yeah, like um, like limited series, like six part episodes. Now, it ran for five seasons and to me it gets put in there with some of the best shows ever. Maybe not in the top five or ten, like I would put X-Files, although it's so close and it is a show I go back to. So in time it might, because it grows on me. Running from, I think, to, to 2013, I believe it ended, it had gotten a little complicated and a little hard to follow for some people. And like I said, if you miss things, but watching it again and again, it's a masterpiece, in my opinion. You don't need 15 seasons, although I'll get to that eventually when I do Supernatural. If you have a story, Battlestar Galactica, the reimagining, whatever you want to call it, and you have a purpose, you have your story, you get to the end, and it's time to end it. Because I don't know if this show is one of those, oh, it petered out, it got canceled. 
I think they knew, because you could tell by the storyline, in my opinion, that it it knew where it was wrapping up. And maybe, it, let's say it got insane ratings. and Yeah, okay, so maybe they would have kept it going. And they did actually play with storylines that you could have done that. It did a real good job with some of the alternate timeline character development that you don't see normally when you got um, your main characters, but sometimes it focuses on another Earth, like a, a mirror universe type thing. Fun, funny as hell. I mean, John Noble, uh, I think he played uh, you know, Barman, Faramir's father in Lord of the Rings, is he. I don't know how many awards they won, if they won any, but he should have won numerous awards. Leonard Nimoy was in the show at times. Um, you get the fringe div- division of uh, the FBI, and it starts to muddle in affairs, and the, the main character has to recruit, you know, the... Um, the crazy uh, old man who has these crazy ideas because she needs to solve these mysteries. It gets so deep and uh, goes back on itself because you realize from the beginning there's a storyline going on. There's mysterious beings, for lack of a better word, that show up. It's just an amazing continuation for me for like X-Files because I could just see it in my head because of the way I role play and I play games that it's just a continuation. It's just a different division of the X-Files universe. So it's a more modern take and developed more for a Homeland Security type FBI procedural where X-Files is um he's already knee deep in the X-Files and he gets a skeptic to come in and try to debunk him in this way she's hard-nosed skeptic i think who has to recruit the crazy to get to the bottom of things it's a really good twist like i said i think it's jj abram's best work i could see the love for loss although at the end it sort of bothered me and it has it's one of those shows that has a season that i could normally forgive but the begin the middle i say if the season is caught between two other seasons that kind of peter out and have a weird vibe to it. It kind of threw me off, but I'm not here to shit on Lost. Um, he, yeah, what was the one? Alias? Okay. I liked Alias. I think that's the name of it. But getting back to Fringe, it's seasonal episodes, how they go into and they have a running plot line is done amazingly. There are reveals that are done so well, things that you kind of know. And like I said, when you got these patterns on the board and between episodes and between commercials, it's like giving you a clue. One of the uh, images I got was um, kind of sums up. It's one of the promos for the show. Is you know, her with a flashlight and the two other main characters behind her. I think you'd recognize him from uh, like Dawson's Creek or something. He was great in the show. They had great chemistry. It's just a good rewatch. Uh, unlike some some other shows, you go back and they they don't know if they have their theme yet or their um, their hook. You know that happened when you look at shows. Uh, that have developed in the same time period. This one nails it almost every aspect. It goes through time. Well, it plays with alternate versions of people just hits all the right beats for me. So a sci-fi drama suspenseful has a little bit of love in there. Lots of humor put in and the humor is so good. It, It gives me the impression of a Josh Whedon, um, level of writing where the writing is top notch the chemistry between the actors is great and it, it makes magic you know it, it just shows in all the episodes even the ones that you might not even consider very good 
And it gets crazy. It really goes out there. You know, and I think the um, glyphs code, they called it, which is on to the left of the screen. They would reveal brief images of it. And it had like a hidden meaning. And they give little clues to things. And it was just, it felt like something you would do back in the day. Uh, like when I was younger. I can't nail it down to something that would say they did it before. So it might be unique for to Fringe. But it was, I, I, this is a show you watch, I watch with my friends. Like we watched it. There's Buffy, X-Files. You know, the shows that you have the same interest in that are really good. Not the ones where like, you watch it, one of your friends is rolling his eyes, and he's like, all right, three right, because we have like a three-episode rule. You try to give things three episodes. No, this one was your grip from the beginning, carries you to the end. Like I said, it's a little complex and gets complicated. I could see if you're missing half a season or something, you, just, you might be lost. Get it? Lost. Anyway, fun, addictive show. I think most people will love it. I can't see a real um, flaw except for the complexity and the storylines that you'll miss if you don't pay enough attention or you're missing episodes. I think it has enough for everybody. It, it touches enough on relationships and sometimes deep, but this the theme of some of the inner workings get really, really heavy. You know, you have a... I don't give plot reveals and spoilers too much. This is a show that's been out for a while. Like I said, it ended in 2013. But basically, you have a father who loves his son and does, will do anything to save him, and it creates a chain of events that leads to tragedies uh, worldwide tragedies it's really deep i i can't say enough good things about this show i would recommend it to anybody get into it it's a little bit of cerebral intellectual it grabs you in the right places whereas some other shows in the same genre don't really hit those points uh, as much as i love supernatural um it has those moments in the chemistry between the brothers, but it's heavy stuff seems to be a little diluted by the fun of the show. And it's, it's another great show. I love it. Any show that can go that long is going to have lots of greatness in it to a certain extent. So Fringe, just amazing. The opening sequence to the episode, I mean, the music they used, it just doesn't get any better than this. In my opinion, even little side characters and mysterious elements that are adding in are done well. It's got one of those, no matter who they bring in, for what circumstance, they shine. Even if you don't like them in something else. It'll be a little hard to explain, but I don't like to give too many things away. I'll give too many things away. And at the time, um, you know, J.J. Ames with Bad Robot, that's... It's at the end of every show. He's pretty popular at the time. And I think it did really well. I'd have to do a little bit more research to see why it ended. And that's, but I, my memory is telling me it ended on a good note. I wouldn't be surprised if it had many awards and there were elements of the show that were critically acclaimed. You know, the mythology and the parallel universe stuff. You, 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 there's a good chance you fail with those type of elements. You can really screw everything up. They did a great job. One of the things I remember standing out was, I'll end with this, was, you know, we just had, it was a real strange thing to see them switch to an alternate universe that had the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center which were, you know, knocked down in 9-11. And it was a weird feeling. I can remember the experience. Sitting there with my friend watching it, like, and, you know, you get your breath taken away. I live in New York. I'm in Brooklyn. I was here when it happened. 
it's just a great way to pay homage and put it into the storyline on how things could be different in other universes without just giving you the mustache and the goatee, the Star Trek Mary Universe stuff, which they did very well also, and especially in other type of shows like you know, Enterprise and Deep Space Nine. Watch Fringe. I recommend it highly. One of the best shows in a long time. Check it out. I'll talk to everybody soon. Take care.